splash again. Rand Carthen makes another big move for the Tennessee Titans as he trades for Chiefs star cornerback Legereus Sneed. And it only cost him a 2025 third round pick and a 2024 seventh round pick. They did have to pay Legere Sneed. We'll get all the details to you momentarily, but bang, 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 baby. The secondary has just gotten a huge weapon. And I'll tell you right now, hit that subscribe button because you see, I'm not in the chat sports offices. In fact, I've been sick all day and I have not really felt that good. But guess what? Doesn't matter. We're still putting out Titans videos because I don't care if I'm sick. I don't care if I'm in a car. I don't think I'm, I'm on a plane. I'm in a room. I don't care where I am. When Titans breaking news happens, I got to get a video out to my guys here on Titans today and girls. And I really do appreciate you watching. So don't think it goes unnoticed. It's an awesome time to be a Tennessee Titan fan and a Nashville because a lot of amazing things are happening. They had the Calvin Ridley signing, which I think was going to be a great deal. I think Ridley has shown, and he said in his press conference, he looks younger than 29, and I truly believe he'll be a great addition with Will Levis as his quarterback. Now you help the defense out by getting a big piece on that sign with Legereus Sneed, who is, in my mind, was the top quarterback in all of the National Football, Football League last year. The Chiefs, or excuse me, the Titans already did sign Chidobe Awuzie as well, so this is the second cornerback they brought in, and these two guys honestly have had really good careers. Legereus Sneed, obviously, the past two years is the reason why he has gotten to this point and has been caliberized as an elite talent in the league, so this is a really, really good thing for the Tennessee Titans. Now, the payment, because I did say that the Titans were going to have to pay Legereus Sneed once they traded for him. Obviously, this was a tag and trade situation, so uh, had to pay him. Here's the basics of the contract we got from Jordan Schultz. It's $19 million average annual per, per year, or four years. $55 million of it is guaranteed. A massive bag for Legereus Sneed, so he's going to be making just shy of about $80 million per year. Uh, I believe that's going to round up to about $76 million over the course of four years if he gets the entire thing, obviously, uh, depending on if he's cut in two years, whatever happens there. But besides the point, $19 million for a quarterback of his caliber is by far a steal. And I really like this move from Rand Carthen because it shows once again, he's not sitting on his hands. He knows that this team was not what Titans fans wanted, expected at all last year. And Will Levis showed some prowess last year you got him a weapon but the titans secondary last year was honestly not good roger mccrary was not great christian fulton obviously not with the team anymore after he is officially a free agent and no looks of him signing back well Rand carthen has made some moves chita bay woozy at one cornerback brought in. kenneth murray i got a linebacker to help out after the aziz al shair signing to houston and now you get legerian Stein, who to me is the biggest move of this offseason right next to Calvin Ridley. I think it really borders right there. Before we get too far into this and before I kind of give why I think this could really change the Titans' outlook in 2024, I want you to give me a one-word reaction to the Titans signing Legereus Need and well, trading and signing Legereus Need to a four-year extension, obviously only giving up a third rounder in 2025 and a seventh rounder this year, and then signing him to that $55 million, around $80, $76 million, worth of four years for luxurious theme one word comment down below superb is my word because this was what we needed this is what the titans had to do to make sure that they were going to be competitive in a very very good afc south next year i don't think people realize the afc south may be fighting for one of the better divisions in all of the national football league you got C.J. Stroud and the Texans team that went all in in free agency getting Daniil Hunter, getting Danico Autry from the Titans, getting Aziz Alshair. They are making sure that they are going to go for a big run while C.J. Stroud is still on his rookie deal. You talk about the Jaguars. Guess what? They got Gabe Davis as their wide receiver. Obviously losing, losing Calvin Ridley too, other than the Tennessee Titans. And I'm pretty proud about that. But you have Trevor Lawrence who... I know he hasn't been what we probably expected as uh, football fans, but I mean, I don't mind it given he's playing against the Titans twice a year, but uh, I truly do think he's still got some prowess on him. And then Anthony Richardson, who will hopefully play a full year. Uh, I know he had the injury last year with the concussion and then uh, the whole thing happened after that. So uh, expecting to see the Indianapolis Colts be good because they're going to have Anthony Richardson. They're going to have Jonathan Taylor. 
Uh, Michael Pittman Jr. is back with them. So this is going to be a very highly competitive AFC South, and the Titans needed to make some big-time moves. They had the most cap space in the entire NFL going into free agency, and they've made work with the money. You talk about Calvin Ridley getting $90 million over four years. Now Legereus Sneed getting almost $80 million over four years. This is what Rand Carthen said he was going to do. This is what Amy Adams Strunk said they were going to do with the Tennessee Titans after firing Mike Rabel. They said, we want to be a winning organization. What'd they do? They hired Brian Callahan, who I'm going to say it, he was the best coaching hire of this entire coaching cycle because I know people are going to say Dan Quinn, but the two top candidates, guess what? Stayed at their position. You talk about Ben Johnson. He was the top one. He stayed with the Lions. You talk about the Texans offensive line, offensive coordinator. He stayed with the Texans. Brian Callen as the offensive minor coach was the best one available and the Titans got him. Denard Wilson, I think he is going to be a great addition as the, as a defensive coordinator, but a secondary coach, and now he gets a secondary addition with Legarius Sneed and Chidobe Awuzie. I truly do feel like that's in the positive making. I think this team is really starting to come together, and this was the move that the defense needed. We've seen the offensive moves. We've seen Calvin Ridley. We've seen them really go out and bolster up with Tony Pollard so they can pair up him with Tajay Spears. This was needed on the defensive side because there's been smaller moves this was the splash move that we've been waiting for for Rand Carthen. And now you're going to get Joe Alt probably as the first pick in round seven. But I do have the question because I know there's rumors floating around. And I know that it's honestly a question now because of the couple signings they've had. Say Joe Alt is off the board at pick number seven. Are the Titans going to trade back? Would you trade back? Well, let me know down in the comment section. Are you trading back the seventh overall pick to potentially the Vikings? I know it'd be a lot to give up for them, but if you have a pick where J.J. McCarthy is there and the Vikings want J.J. McCarthy, well, that's pick 11 and pick 22, 23, whatever it is, for pick seven. That would be nice. I mean, I'd also take pick 11 in round two and, uh, and then the Vikings round two pick. I would really take that. You get an extra round two pick and, and another first round pick right there. So I wouldn't mind that. I think that I have to wait and see what happens. But what would you be willing to give up? Why don't you let me know if you're even willing to trade the first overall pick or the, the number seven overall pick because maybe you want Joe Walt, you're going to stay, you're going to keep him, and you don't care if he's there or not. You're going to take an offensive lineman if he's not there and Olu Fashano. If you're keeping the first round pick, type Y for yes. If you're not, you're going to say no, we can trade him. Type in for no. Let me know down in the comments section. Titans fans, man, this is such a good time. This is a lot of moves that we've just been waiting for, we've been expecting. And Rand Carthen, he truly has backed up his word and statement of saying that he wants the Titans to be a successful team. It's his second offseason. I would argue last year's draft was pretty exceptional. I know Peter Skaronsky hasn't been the offensive lineman we expected him to be, but in some facets, I do feel like that's because the offensive line was just bad around him, and it's hard to be good when you have so many other problems around you. But you talk about the other parts of that draft that were I think overall really big hits. Tajay Spears, one of them. I think he was a great, great addition. And I truly do feel like Rand Cartham has this team going in the right direction going forward. And this was a big move. Trading for Legere Sneed, once again, the details, a third round pick in 2025 and a seventh round pick this year going to Kansas City and return Legere Sneed coming to Tennessee, Nashville, where he will get $55 million guaranteed in a four-year contract. $19 million a year, going to be around $76, $80 million. Uh, we'll obviously have the full details in the coming days and get that out to you. But big moves in Nashville. Make sure you're subscribed, man, because, again, we're putting out videos wherever we are. And on top of which, I just told you, the Titans, they're looking good for 2024. And if you want to be a part of the Titans Today movement, hit that sub button. For now, Titans fans, I cannot say it loud enough. You need to say it louder in the comments, though. Tighten up and peace out, man.